Okay, so we got to talk about Dr. Jill Stein. Uh, Dr. Jill Stein was recently uh, in the news in regards towards uh, getting on the ballot in the great state of Nevada. So we've talked about this before, but why am I bringing up this story? Well, it's again, this was only recently where she got on the Nevada ballot. Uh, and, of course, corporate media creating a spoiler opportunity. Again, look. All the third party candidates have every right to be on the debate stage, have every right to be on the ballot, have every right to run for office. OK, and that goes for any kind of office, be it at the city level, county level, state level, federal level. So be it. OK, it is their right. And this was a big win for the Green Party, as the Green Party will appear on Nevada's presidential ballot in November. Uh, a state judge ruled on Monday, tossing out an appeal from state Democrats and setting up a, uh, up the potential for the third party to bleed votes from Vice President Kamala Harris. Well, the Democrats just didn't take that lightly. And as it stands right now, folks, this is from the Jill Stein campaign website for 2024. Uh, again, ballot access. And it has uh, grown quite a lot right now. The Greens on the ballot, Jill Stein on the ballot. And as as it stands right now, and there's a write-in campaign here in Illinois, but the Greens have secured a good portion of the states. Their fight is still ongoing. There's a couple of states where they're actively petitioning, and if they succeed there, they will win. And also, not to mention submitting for uh, submitting and waiting for certification. Now, this is this is fantastic to see. This was last updated on the 13th of 2024. However, unfortunately, folks. The Democrats are not going to let this go. And we have covered uh, how the Greens and Libertarians and independent candidates throughout all of Hardland's media's existence, how they have been, uh, how they, all third parties have been censored and suppressed and been fought against by both Democratic and Republican uh, state chairs and, of course, their affiliate parties. And now, as it stands, folks, Wisconsin Democrats move to block third party candidate Jill Stein from the ballot, which would likely boost Harris among anti-Israel voters. Now, Democrats, you've tried this before. And I want to pull this up before I go through the article and what happened. Let's just do a little bit of a, a rewind. Democrats, many a time, especially after the 2016 election cycle, you have falsely and wrongly have stated that if Jill Stein was not on the ballot in 2016, Green Party supporters, Green Party voters, Jill Stein supporters, however which way you want to call them, would have fallen in line and followed the orders and vote for Hill Dog. Well, no, that wasn't the case at all. No, 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 no. Are, are you sure about that? Because from what I was able to learn and hear and speak to in regards to Green Party voters, you didn't have that in the bag. And Green Party voters and independents are not robots that are going to say, oh, well, we got to support Kamala. No, there's a there was a 100 percent certainty that none of them would have voted for you, especially after the 2016 election cycle. Now, it seems pulling up this article again, the Democrats are assuming that if Jill Stein isn't on the Wisconsin ballot, third party supporters, Green Party supporters, independents will fall in line and support Harris. So let's talk about it. So uh, there are swing states and then there are swing states like Wisconsin, where about 20,000 votes fewer than one percent have decided four of uh, four of the dairy state's last presidential elections. Even a few thousand votes siphoned off by a third party presidential candidate could determine which direction Wisconsin's coveted 10 electoral votes will go. David Strag, a the state's Democrat National Committee Deputy Operations Director, filed a complaint because, of course, they always got to file a complaint Wednesday, challenging the ballot access of Wisconsin Green Party candidate Jill Stein, <clears throat> excuse me, who won more than 30,000 votes here in the 2016 presidential election, which are votes that she earned. And again, voter turnout's key, Democrats, and popular vote doesn't matter in this country. Theoretically, it should, but it's the electoral college, and voter enthusiasm is key. Gee, Democrats, it's almost as if, and, and I and look, I could be wrong about this, and you, the audience, have every right to correct me, but it's almost as if, that the Democrats aren't as confident in Kamala Harris bringing up voters as they're, well, leading corporate media to believe or what we see on social media. I mean, Democrats, if you're so confident, you wouldn't need to do something this underhanded. I mean, I get it. You got to rig the game. But if you were so confident in Kamala and good old Timmy boy, you wouldn't need to do this unless maybe behind closed doors, there's a little bit of a panic. 
Maybe the Democrats are a little bit afraid. Maybe the Democrats are crying. I mean, it's okay, Democrats. It's, it's okay to be afraid. It's okay to be afraid, Democrats. It's okay to be afraid. But you know what it's telling me? You guys aren't sure in your choice as Kamala. And so that's why you got to do this. The complaint alleges the Wisconsin Green Party, which qualified for ballot access in 2022 when a, uh, when a candidate garnered 1% of the state votes, does not have qualified electors to put forward and therefore runs afoul of Wisconsin's election law. Of course, there's, there's always a loophole. The Green Party's uh, virtual convention happens this week, where Stein is expected to win the party's presidential nomination. Her platform includes left-leaning positions such as codifying Roe v. Wade. Wow, she's got a poll. Hey! Controversial statement in a three, two, one, a presidential candidate with policies, policies, abolishing student debt, opposing uh, school choice and supporting the Equality Act, which would add, uh, again, uh, sex, sexual, uh, sexual orientation and gender identity to the 1964 Civil Rights Act. The Wisconsin Green Party's website features an article from May titled Standing with Students, Standing with Gaza, which praised student protests at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and endorsed the students' demands. Stein and her campaign manager were arrested in April at Washington University in St. Louis while taking part in the anti-Israel protest. That has nothing to do with this. Removing an option for pro-Palestinian voters in Wisconsin would likely be a boon for, Dem for the Democratic Party. Removing the option for pro-Palestinian voters in Wisconsin would likely be a boon for the Democratic Party. You heard me read this sentence, right? I mean, th th there are days where I look at the Democratic establishment, and these are people who make, what, a six-figure salary, nice suits and ties. They eat three meals a day, roof over their head. You know, for the most part, they're doing all right in this neoliberal nightmare. But the, are you really assuming that people are just going to go along with this? Because last I checked, wait a minute, hold up. Wait, hold on. Removing an option for pro-Palestinian voters in Wisconsin, because I had to read this article twice before doing this show. And even reading the sentence here, I'm still caught off by it. I'm, I, it's, it's, it's like someone gave me a left hook because you just can't be this dumb Democrats because it seems to me, it seems to me, it seems to me, you guys and gals aren't fully aware of what the uncommitted and pro-Palestinian voters think of you because here's something that happened in the great state of New York and New York City as pro-Palestinian protesters storm and smoke bomb a New York Democratic Harris event 2024. It was an after party in Harlem. Gee, something tells me that they're not going to do what you want them to do. How dare you! Now, this is a video that went viral, and we talked about this yesterday, too. But I want to pull this up here again. In April, presidential uh, primary, almost 48,000 voters cast an un un unstructed ballot as a protest against President Biden's handling of the Israeli-Gaza conflict. Guess who's his VP? Kamala. Biden, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris, and Senator Tim Tammy Baldwin have all faced anti-Israel protests and hecklers when campaigning in Wisconsin. But of course, Kamala's going to say, be quiet. I'm speaking. Wisconsin Democrat Chair Ben Wilker said after the primary that then Democrat presidential candidate Biden had work to do to earn those uninstructed voters. You mean uncommitted voters, uncommitted, uncommitted. I'm, I'm not even going to put that in there. Uncommitted, uncommitted voters. Now booting other options for pro-Palestinian voters off the ballot may be the Democrats key in pushing those voters towards Harris. Hey, listen, listen uh, to the to the. To the uncommitted voters, to the pro-Palestinian protesters out there, this is a direct question. Is this a move that's going to be like, oh, okay, Jill Stein's off the ballot. We're going to trust Kamala Harris. She has made it abundantly clear. When people show you who, you, who they are, you better believe them. Because the Democrats don't care. You know, 
during this whole war in Gaza, who was Biden's VP? Kamala. Not once, not ever, did she say, oh, gee, Biden, we should do something to stop it. No. Indifferent to it. Why? Because she's following orders from APAC. Th this, this is what I mean by when these politicians, Democrats and Republicans, they don't like us. They don't think about us. They don't respect us. This is a move on how little they think about voters because they're going to assume, oh, well, if there's if there's no other option there, if you don't have a third party option, well, I guess you're just going to have to just shut up and vote blue. What if they leave it blank, geniuses? Huh? Did you think about that, Democrats? No, you probably didn't. But Trump, we got to be afraid of Trump. Harris responded to a question in March about the uncommitted protest vote uh, in neighboring Minnesota. They ma they matter, the VP declared, and we care about them. Do you think that you matter to Kamala, uncommitted voters? As a matter of fact, let's ask everybody. We got almost 300 people watching us live right now. Let's keep on boosting up those views and hit that like button. But let's just be clear here. Let's have democracy in the chat. Type one for if, if you believe Kamala Harris. Like, yes, she knows that they matter and that she cares about them. A type two, man, she don't care about them. What the hell? What, what are you talking about? What you talking about, Kit Kat? I wonder how many twos will be in the chat. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. With all my heart, I shall wonder and wonder. We respect the fact that people feel very strongly about what we are witnessing, Harris said, referring to the Israel-Hamas war. Look at that. The DNC employee filed a complaint against former Green Party member and independent candidate Cornell West last week, attempting to deny his ballot access as well. Look, I have my criticisms for Cornell West, but he has a right to be on the ballot, too. OK, simple as that. This is a fishing expedition conjured up by the DNC. Stein's campaign manager, Jason Call, told the Post, and it's in line with their statements back in March that they will hire an army of lawyers and infiltrators to find any angle of attack to prevent Green Party ballot access. The American people are tired of these anti-Democrat shenanigans, and we absolutely will be hiring counsel to defend our ballot line in Wisconsin, Call continued. In a poll out Wednesday, Harris took a strong lead over Donald Trump in Wiscovy. Really? I don't think so. When third-party cans were factored in, leading the former president 48 to 43. The unelected uh, six-member bipartisan uh, Wisconsin elect election commission will determine the fate of Stein, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., and other two independent candidates in August 27th commission meeting. So what do we learn from this? First of all, we see this ballot access map from the Green Party. They're able to secure some votes, and I'm surprised that there's a write-in campaign in Illinois because Illinois is a very tough draconian state. But it uh, looks like New York State, it's still in court. And this is a lot of stuff that the Greens are going to have to deal with. But it comes as no surprise to me, or should, should not come to surprise to any one of you as well, that this is the length at which the DNC is willing to go to silence and suppress critical voices and giving another option for voters to choose from. Now, we here at Heartlands Media, we're not endorsing any single candidate. But I know I will be voting. I don't know if I'll be voting for a presidential candidate. I might leave it blank. But for all of you watching, you have a right to choose to vote however which way you want. And it is unfair for the two-party system to deny you the choice for voting independent third party. Do what you feel is necessary on election night. And if you don't want to vote, that's your choice. But the point is, Jill Stein and any other candidate has a right to be on the ballot. We are theoretically a constitutional republic that practices democratic values. Boy, oh boy, what a sight it would be if it actually worked.